When we want to go to war with someone, we invent the reasons. They make a lot of profit when we are involved. NATO should welcome Georgia and Ukraine. We were wrong. Three communist PT boats attacked an American destroyer off the coast of Vietnam yesterday, and today President Johnson's response was hard and tough. To any armed attack upon our forces, we shall reply. The Vietnamese people hated me, and I gave them every reason to hate me. I beat them. I sometimes killed them. I destroyed their houses. I destroyed their crops. I destroyed their fields. I destroyed their culture. We believe this essential to help safeguard the freedom of South Vietnam and to save the lives of those South Vietnamese, Americans, Australians, New Zealanders, and Koreans who are fighting to ensure that freedom. I just saw the airplane two words to me, and I turned my head and I saw the four bombs landing down, landing down. I, I never forget that. Then suddenly, the fire everywhere around me, the fire just burned off my clothes. That moment, my feet did not not burn, so I was able to run out of that fire. And they were old men, women, children, no young men. And I, I couldn't believe these guys were treating these people this way. And I, I turned to Jimmy and said, I grabbed him by the arm and said, what are, what are those guys doing? These aren't, these are, we're supposed to be helping these people. Since they began hitting North Vietnam 16 months ago, the raids also mark significant escalation of the war. No, it was just confusion. And events afterwards showed that our judgment that we'd been attacked that day was wrong. It didn't happen. We were wrong. But we had in our minds a mindset that led to that action and it carries such heavy costs. At this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. On my orders, coalition forces have begun striking selected targets of military importance to undermine Saddam Hussein's ability to wage war. We have first-hand descriptions of biological weapons factories on wheels and on rails. Ambition and hatred are enough to bring Iraq and Al-Qaeda together, enough so Al-Qaeda could learn how to build more sophisticated bombs and learn how to forge documents, and enough so that Al-Qaeda could turn to Iraq for help in acquiring expertise on weapons of mass destruction. There are reports that there is no evidence of a direct link between Baghdad and some of these terrorist organizations. There are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. But, excuse me, but is this an unknown unknown? Uh, I'm not. Several unknowns, and I'm, I'm just wondering I'm not this going, is an unknown I'm not going to say which it is. to the Iraqi people food and medicines 
and supplies and freedom. It is now clear that policy on Iraq was made on the basis of flawed intelligence and assessments. They were not challenged, and they should have been. decades of deceit and cruelty have now reached an end. Saddam Hussein and his sons must leave Iraq within 48 hours. The game is over. تتيح الجلسة الواحد والأربعون من جلسات المحكمة الجنائية العراقية العليا الخاصة بقضية الدجيل قررت المحكمة الحكم على المدان صدام حسين المجيد بالإعدام شنقا حتى الموت لارتكاب قتل العام كجريمة ضد الإنسانية وفق الماسة معاش أولا أليس بدلالة المادة Mr. Blair sought a partnership as a way of influencing President Bush. He proposed a UN ultimatum to Iraq to readmit inspectors or face the consequences. On July the 28th, Mr. Blair wrote to President Bush with an assurance that he would be with him whatever. I had to decide. I thought of Saddam his record, the character of his regime. I thought of our alliance with America, and it's important to us in the post 9-11 world, and I weighed it carefully. I only ask with humility that the British people accept that I took this decision because I believe that it was the right thing to do based on the information that I had and the threats I perceived. When we made the decision to go into Iraq, many intelligence agencies around the world judged that Saddam possessed weapons of mass destruction. I think the Americans knew that he didn't have these weapons. Certainly in the Pentagon, they knew, and they didn't tell us. And, you know, Chilcot did a great inquiry, but he wasn't able to look at the American evidence because the Americans didn't really cooperate with his inquiry. And now when I look at the American evidence, they didn't worry that, that he didn't have weapons. Mm. They were going to go for him anyway. They were into they, regime change. They wanted the regime to change. Mr. Bush, when are you going to apologize for the million Iraqis that are dead because you lied? You lied about weapons of mass destruction. You lied about connections to 9-11. You lied about Iraq being a threat. You sent me to Iraq. You sent me to Iraq in 2003. My friends are dead. Joshua Castile. You 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 lied! You lied about WMD! A million Iraqis are dead because you lied! My friends are dead because you lied! You need to apologize! When we want to go to war with someone, we invent the reasons. A technique that was developed rapidly and met with great success was the demonization of the enemy. While I was there, I saw the Iraqi soldiers come into the hospital with guns. They took the babies out of the incubators, took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. This 15-year-old woman, girl, was Perhaps not entirely unbiased, she was the daughter of the Kuwaiti ambassador to the United States. 
But this was swiftly taken up. Nobody stopped to ask themselves, and it's important to remember in any propaganda barrage how quickly people are swept away. No one said, is it likely, assuming that the babies were thus thrown out of the incubators, that in a hospital, would no one pick them up? Ten years later, we're out of Iraq, and Iraq is no better for 10 years of war. Twelve-year-old Ali Abbas, he heard planes flying overhead. Next thing he knew, members of his family were dead. He had no arms, has gotten offers to be taken to the United States to be treated in an American hospital. And his response to that was, these are the people who killed my family. I don't want to go there, anywhere but there. If you go around the world and ask people who, which is the most warlike country on earth, which one do you think they would respond? The United States. We are fighting in Korea for our own national security and survival. We take this action not for the purpose of expanding the war into Cambodia, but for the purpose of ending the war in Vietnam. Air attacks are underway against military targets in Iraq. We are determined to knock out Saddam Hussein's nuclear bomb potential. We will also destroy his chemical weapons facilities. exercised military power to defeat the aggression of Mr. Milosevic. We won the war. The Gaddafi regime is coming to an end. A short time ago, I ordered the United States Armed Forces to launch precision strikes on targets associated with the chemical weapons capabilities of Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad. The United States has been at constant war with Iraq and Afghanistan and, and Syria and, and Yemen and and, and many other countries. Almost constant war. And, and it, the, the uh, expert economists estimated that we would spend about $3 trillion on those wars. A trillion is a million million. The costs of the war, well over a trillion dollars already, probably another trillion dollars in long-term costs, caring for, for those who borne the burden, recapitalizing uh, the army, uh, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, for, for the, the systems that have, have been worn down in this grinding decade of war. So we've, we're, we're, we've paid extraordinary human costs and dollar costs, and we're going to continue to be paying those costs for literally generations to come. There's a very heavy bill that comes with this war. Voices of those objecting to U.S. involvement in Vietnam were getting louder. In May of 1970, Four students were killed by National Guard troops during a campus protest at Kent State University in Ohio. No war on Iraq! No war on Iraq! No war on Iraq! No war on Iraq! No justice! No peace! U.S. out of the Middle East! No justice! No peace! U.S. out... You know, for years and generations, wars have been fought over oil. The military-industrial complex, that is, the manufacturers of all kinds of weapons, uh, are very influential in the Congress and in the, and in, and in the uh, country as well. 
And uh, so we, we know that they make a lot of profit when we are involved in buying weapons. Afghan victims who have been left in the dark without information and without access to justice and how the deeply followed US military system is a fundamental part of the reason why this is happening. The definition of innocent people, there's no question about it, you know, little girls. I mean, there's, there's just no, no way to rationalize. Our actions are bound by consultations with partners and respect for state sovereignty. And before any strike is taken, there must be near certainty that no civilians will be killed or injured. How much evil must we do in order to do good? Even if today there was not a single new uh, war victim, we would have enough job for the next 40 years. Because a, a, an artificial limb, a prosthesis, have to be re has to be replaced every three years, two years. Children are growing. Sometimes you have to change the leg every six months. And then the landmines are there. <laughs> so it's the dream that no new uh, war victims are, are going to come. It's just a dream. یونیگر <laughs> A 68-year-old woman, Mamana Bibi, was killed in a drone strike that appears to have been directly targeted at her. Her grandchildren recounted in painful detail to Amnesty International the moment when she was blown into pieces in front of their very eyes while she was gathering vegetables. Almost a year to the day, her family has yet to receive any acknowledgement from the US that she was killed by one of its drones, let alone any justice or compensation for her killing.
पौने तीन बजे हमारे अम्मी भिंडी को काट रही थी पहले अटैक में वो शहीद हो गई और कुछ बच्चे जख्मी हो गए Since 2009, the United States has carried out an estimated 80 uh, targeted killing operations in Yemen. These strikes have killed an estimated 473 people. Yet the U.S. has only publicly acknowledged two of these strikes, those that have killed Americans. It's as if the hundreds of Yemenis killed in these attacks simply never existed. Shelling, airstrikes and snipers hit people going about their daily lives, often without warning in areas where there's no active combat going on and creates the sense that there is no safe place for Yemenis to hide. There are certain states who are well known to be supplying weapons. That includes the United States. When we have said that it is the responsibility of the international community as a whole to respond to this crisis, that is particularly apt for those countries that have special influence, and that must include those that supply arms. NATO was fighting a high-tech air war. Their pilots flying at altitude had access to the best military systems in the world. Images from laser-guided weapons. NATO was happy to show TV audiences how it was hitting its targets. Even so, there were unintended casualties. The NATO commander had to defend his men. If you were focused right on your job as a pilot, suddenly that train appeared. Look very intently at the aim point, concentrate right there and... That train had been packed with civilians. Other well-publicized tragedies followed. Here, a column of refugees apparently mistaken for a military convoy had been attacked. Before 24th of March, when they started uh, their uh, damn bombing and they started their dirty aggression against this country, there was no one single refugee. When they started bombing, refugees uh, uh, appears, of course, as a result of bombing, and everybody knows. inspired the world with their rose and orange revolutions, NATO should welcome Georgia and Ukraine into the membership action plan. NATO welcomes Ukraine's and Georgia's Euro-Atlantic aspirations for membership in NATO. We agree today that these countries will become members of NATO. because it has always been a philosophy that it was important in Europe to have areas where, which were neutral, where, which were, you know, not having troops coming right up to the border, also because that reduces the reaction time for missiles to get from those countries to Moscow. So instead of that, we have had this, this belt, also Austria, Yugoslavia at the time, etc., which were buffer zones, if you will, that could reduce the tension and also be advocates of disarmament and common security. Everyone in that room today understood the shared appreciation, quite frankly, that America is back. We talked about Russia's aggressive acts that pose a threat to NATO and our collective security. Не мы кому-то угрожаем, к нам пришли. И теперь еще 
говорят, нет, теперь и Украина будет в НАТО. And we, in effect, were crossing a red line. We were presenting an existential threat to the Russians. And the Russians made this unequivocally clear to us, and we continued to double down. And the end result is, on February 24th of this year, Putin invaded Ukraine. The Russian Republic of Donbass came to Russia with a request for help. We have taken a decision to conduct a special military operation. And the United States and our allies and partners are moving as fast as possible to continue to provide Ukraine the forces that they need, the weapons they need, excuse me, the equipment they need. Their forces need to defend their nation. Wie Sie wissen, haben wir gestern entschieden, dass Deutschland der Ukraine Waffen zur Verteidigung des Landes liefern wird. Let me be very clear. Our airspace will be closed to every Russian plane. And we close important Russian banks from the bank communication net SWIFT. We've now sanctioned Russian banks that together hold around one trillion dollars in assets. Every asset they have in America will be frozen. Многие у нас убеждены, что реально позиция Украины определяется в Вашингтоне, Лондоне и других западных столицах. On April the 24th, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin visited the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv. They were the first senior U.S. officials to visit the country since the outbreak of the conflict. Uh, you should know, the people of uh, Ukraine should know that uh, we will continue to do everything possible uh, to ensure that, that you're successful. The yeas are 86, the nays are 11, and the bill is passed.